welcome to Main Event Pong Presents Books and Booze with Banshee and Deezy. Long time no see. It's been a while. Yeah. Tonight's episode is a very, very, very special episode. And the book we are reading tonight, The Beekeeper, is written by a very good friend of mine, Tracy D. Vincent. This is an author that I'm a very good friend with. I've met her two different book cons, and I just love her. She's like my sister from another mister. We have like the same taste in celebrities. Her and I both love Simon Pegg, he's in our top six. So this girl is very, very important to me. That being said, I'm gonna tell you something about that. But before we do that, we're gonna take our introductory shot. Yeah. This book is called The Beekeeper, but just so you guys know, it's not about bees. One of the characters in the books keeps bees because he likes honey straight from the comb. So we are doing honey themed drinks, but it ain't really relevant. It's just there's a honey on there and that yeah, guy you, does. You never really, you only find out about bees like once. And then other than that, it's just a nickname that people, mm -hmm. like the boogeyman. So we got some Jim Bean honey, but it is in a plastic bottle, so we'll see how this yeah, goes. Yeah, why is it? You know, I couldn't I find one in a classic bottle. I couldn't find one in a glass. Like a rule but it's Jim that. Bean, homie. Because I'm probably gonna have to chase this. We've got two beer selections tonight. Miso Honey from Belching Beaver, who is a really good brewery. If you haven't had their beers, you totally should. Their peanut butter milk stout is life changing. Hashtag Belching Beaver. This is something new we found. It's from Evans Brewing Co. and it is Pollination Honey Blonde Ale. So let's get into our shot. Bring you Tracy. Yeah. God damn, that's gross. Mm. What do you think about this miso honey? Hold on. It's good. How good is it? Uh, I mean, it, mm, beer a little bit. Uh, it's average. I don't think it's that great. All right, you pass the test. Because early on, we had a mm, beer where David was on the episode, and he gave this beer a C. If you didn't remember, I was going to give you a bunch of shit about that. <laughs> it was a test. That being said... <laughs> you just been nice, bro. Dude, you gotta get on a knee. That don't count. Yeah, it does. No, you have <laughs> yes, to... Yes, it does. You have to propose to me drink with this thing. Shit. You better drink it. That's... <sighs> Stereotype. I know you got I lemon. I just thought it was good. I know you got lemon and apple in there, and you bring me the watermelon. <laughs> I bought that one for you. I'm surprised he's doing that. I didn't think he was going to do it. This is just our return to Books and Booze since it's been a minute since we did it, so we wanted to go big or go home. <sighs> Dang, dude, you're a pro. Is that good? No. Not even a little bit? It's too sweet. <sighs> All right, so I want to talk to you guys about Tracy. <clears throat> so actually, I'm not trying to make myself seem like I'm a big deal. But oh in gosh. the independent YA book community, I know a lot of people. <coughs> I, I know a lot of writers. There are a couple of other writers that I do know personally that we're going to get on this show. Uh, Sarah Elizabeth Santana, Claire uh, C.L. Monaghan. There's a book I really think David would enjoy. I'm very choosy about the books I put on this show. Despite the fact that it seems like we do a lot of girlier books, I do like to try to do things that I think, you know, everybody could enjoy. That being said, this book's not for kids. So don't let kids read this book. Oh yeah, not at all. No. I have a lot of friends who are really, really good writers and I love their stuff, but like, Deezy's not going to read those books. So Tracy, she does do some romance, which I love Tracy's romance books, oh my god. You know, she's very versatile, so she can write a lot of different styles, which is why I chose The Beekeeper to be on this show. And she sent us books, which is nice. Not that, you know, I bought it digitally too, and not that I wouldn't pay for this book like oh, seven Oh, I remember, times. She, I did see that. Yes, she did. Because she said, made a comment about it not being yeah. too girly. And just so you guys know, when Tracy sent me this book, it came with a letter that said that the character in this book, whose name is Megan, was borrowed from me. And she spells it the same way as I do, too. Oh, that so there's a character that. named after me yeah. in this book. This book is kind of a, kind of like a mystery unfolding. It's a really clever kind of crime, it's crime very story. It's very Tarantino-ish. Yeah. It unfolds in a very clever way. Because it being a mystery and there being plot points, we don't want to ruin for you. Normally we don't care because a lot of the books are more famous and we're like, if you don't oh, know yeah, what's we spoil it. We're like, if you don't know what happened in the Maze yeah. Runner at this point or yeah. Twilight at this point. But with this yeah, one, this is our friend. Most of them are pretty pop. Every book we've done on this show has been pretty popular, right? 
uh, Cinder? Yeah, dude, Marissa Meyer is super popular. I had to get a wristband to get her autograph at Y'all West, so yes. I don't know, for the most part, most of our, the books have been very popular, so this one we don't want to spoil for you because we know that literally not one of you has read this. So, you should read it. You can get Please. it from Amazon, yeah. you can um, join her Facebook group, which is really fun, I'm on it. I definitely enjoy her writing. Pretty early in the novel, you learn that the title character, the beekeeper, is, like David said, kind of like the boogeyman. So he is on the streets. In the slums, in, he's like, in he's the like world. A boogie, he's like a boogeyman to like crime. He's, yeah. He's a he's tool like, that's mm, used, like the name is used like to scare the underbelly yeah. of the inner streets. So don't do anything too wrong because exactly. a beekeeper keeper will catch you and torture you. That's exactly it. And everybody's afraid of them. There's stories. Everybody's afraid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are the, the main characters, your main players, if you will. You have Jack the beekeeper, the thief who's Angela, you have the blackmailer, who's Jeffrey Jr., the double crosser, who's Ed, the lover, who's Maya, the dealer, who's Mr. Howard, Maya's a free. and the head, who's Jeffrey Sr. Basically, the book is divided into these characters' times that they spend with the beekeeper. But we won't really tell you how their particular characters fall into line um, with the mystery and the plot, but know that the majority of them are not good people. After you complete the book, you're gonna realize how much you hate the beekeeper, especially when you think about like Angela. Except I kinda like him. Nah, man. I don't you know get me on though. That. I'm the kind of. I'm the girl talk who about one it. of her favorite characters in Game of Thrones is Joffrey. So you can't. I literally have a Joffrey action figure right there. Yeah, but I he's, love he's worse than him. He's worse. Than he is him. not worse than Joffrey. He is way worse. At least he's a little righteous. He's a, exactly. That's what makes him worse. <laughs> he's like a villain because the villains are only worse because you have these villains who are like, oh, I'm gonna kill everybody. Oh, boogeyman. But then you got vill villains who are justified in what they do. They think they're doing the right thing. They have a cause and a purpose. Worst kind of villain, just like Hitler. That's what the beekeeper is. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know, Tracy, you handle business. Cause I was mad about this book for like two weeks after I was done. That's how you knew you were a good writer. That's how you know you handle you business. You invoked emotion in this book. Because bro. I was so mad at the beekeeper and Megan because of their self-righteousness, oh. not you. Oh, that Megan. Yeah, that Megan. <laughs> I was like, what I do? Because of their self-righteousness. Like, oh yeah, Megan, Megan. You know, delusions <laughs> of grandeur. Mm -hmm. Whatever psychotic thing, and, oh no no, we're just this is why we do yeah. it. It's a science. This is this is our job. No. So Angela kind of enters the scene as a victim of circumstance, but then it turns out she's oddly and coincidentally entwined. Yeah. With the characters in a weird way, we won't spoil for you. But randomly, the way she gets involved is she steals a car. Yeah. So she steals a car that is linked to a crime unbeknowingly. She's just trying to do her own petty crime. That's not a major crime, just yeah. joyriding. And then she unfortunately steals the wrong car and it ends up in a crazy entangled well, crime. So we have to, so we may have to leave it kind yeah. of like that. Yeah. So we'll just start off with that. Angela steals a car and- mm -hmm. we'll, And, and that's it. Can we pause and talk about the world a little bit? You know what? I was wondering about this. Is, okay. is it, it, is it oh, post apocalyptic? Well, it sh it says Angela was born in, in 1998. Yeah, so it's not post apocalyptic, feels, but this world sucks. It feels a little more crimey. I mean, it's kind of like a mob situation going on. Yeah. But it hey, feels. Hey, hold on, hold on. Stop talking. Hurry up. What's this? Because we got to get mm -hmm. this one going now. Yeah. He makes me drink. So it almost feels a little post-apocalyptic or dystopian, but yeah. I don't think it's supposed to be. I don't think it's supposed to be either. But, but it is some about sort of underbelly going on. When I read it, I know it's supposed to be like modern times, but there is a weird feel to it that's like a dark future. Yeah. I don't know why. Because of what goes down with the beekeeper, it seems like she's in a real jail. Well, maybe it's because something like this could and exist. And not like a mob jail. Because something like this could exist, but not really in our present time. Well, it's almost like Sin City. Very much like Sin City. A little bit City. like Sin City, yeah. yeah. yeah so, uh, but Sin City feels like it's Post modern. a little bit. Uh, yeah, it does feel a little bit, but it does feel kind of modern, like it could be like Vegas or something, like the yeah. mob. But there is some kind of, but this is in present time. Like I said, Angela was born in 98. If she was born in 98, how old would that make her now? 
No, she's supposed 20. to be, yeah, young. That would make her like 20. And I think this book came out last year, so she'd be like 19. Yeah. So it's it's modern times. So it's taking place now. So, it's, I mean, it could be one of these cities where there's more mob, you know? Mm -hmm. But it does, like I said, because the beekeeper is in like a regular jail, it does not like a mob jail. Well, it's not even a know. jail. It's like a warehouse. And then here's what threw me off too. Like there's lawyers involved. Because remember mm -hmm. in the beginning? So that's why... That's why it feels apocalyptic. It does a little bit. Because there's all this legal stuff that feels like, mm -hmm. and then the beekeeper's able to exist. Like, and mm -hmm. I don't know if there's people in this world who can do the kind of stuff the beekeeper does. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, we can tell you this much: the beekeeper can distract information from you by any means. Yep. You know, there's no, you know, police. I mean, we don't have to. We can spoil that a little bit because yeah. it happens right he, away. He but tortures like Angela, you. Angela, like, he puts cuts on her body. Yeah, it's not like and water. And he washes them with salt water. Yeah, he tortures yeah. you. He, I was like, yes. I'm not happy because I love that shit. What, what, you know what, I love Gore. What, what, but nah, what are I you talking about? I love that shit. What do you think I love John? I love that shit. Anyway, everybody's tortured to extract information. There is no limits. This dude, the worst thing you could think of, and I don't mean worst thing like, mm -hmm. like, you know, slap your nuts. Like this dude will either take chunks of skin or he'll cut you mm -hmm. or acid. Did you finish this before me? Good job, I'm proud of you. Look, mm -hmm. good job, see? That's why we hang out. You made me. I just told you a little bit about Angela Jeffrey. We'll just tell you that he's a spoiled, drug addicted, overprivileged, white freaking senator's son. Yeah. That's all you need to know about yeah. that motherfucker. And that anything he is into, obviously, he's not doing it Drugs, well. Drugs, women, yeah. alcohol, and blowing money. If he tries to come up with a scheme, privilege. obviously, he's going to be the person who can't pull that shit off or whatever because clearly. He doesn't have the brains to do it because other people have been doing shit for him his whole life, right? We gotta, we gotta choose this. Yes. Let's try this. Pollination. Honey blonde ale. Mm -hmm. I like the pollinate blondes. <laughs> he never one time did that. That's good. I like that. There's a weird uh, aftertaste. Like, wow, well, sorry. That was... That was <laughs> cool. Made me chug that beer. It's good, but it's, it tastes like a vinegar or something. So I don't know if it's a bitterness or I don't taste no beer. Vinegar, but I think it's delish. Then you got Ed. Ed is kind of like I feel like he's the muscle. You Ed is Jeffrey's friend. He's a uh, I guess not as attractive, but that he comments but smarter. The whole, he's smart. He's still fairly attractive, but he's very masculine. Mm -hmm. He also I feel like he's like the the brute. Well, he is a brute, mm -hmm. and he he talks about his I junk like all the time. God. Yeah. He talks about his junk like three, like a bunch of times. I like, love that shit. Like yeah, I'm not as sexy as Jeffrey, but I'm I'm big and I can handle women. But he can't please his girl because his girl's a freak and she likes something else. But um, mm -hmm. he's Jeffrey's first best friend, but he also is uh, Jeffrey's father's right hand man. Mm -hmm. So he, even though Jeffrey's father is a senator and uh, Jeffrey's Jeffrey Senior, mm -hmm. and he wants Jeffrey to kind of take over the family name. But Ed is the one who sees himself as like a rightful heir. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like the, there's always one of those, you know. Oh, it's like Loki and Thor. Because Thor is like Odin's son. And yeah. you see what I'm saying where I'm going with so this, like right? Loki? So he kind of becomes like a not good person. And he's kind of on his side, but he's really not. He's on his I own actually, side. I actually like Ed. So that's it. Then we got Maya. Like we said, we little told her you a little Maya. bit about your Maya. She's um, dating, and I don't know why I want to say they're engaged. They're not, but I feel like they feel like it's. I think they're, go no, they're engaged. Are they? They are I don't engaged. Know. Beyonce. She pops comes up. from like old mob money. Yeah. And Mobster's she's daughter. she's in the family, but she knows she's never gonna like be able to take over the family because she's a woman. She's a woman. Yeah. So there's struggles there. But she thinks she's, she's got it though. Prim and proper and protected, except no. Except that girl's dark in her heart. Oh yeah, she's, she's a twisted. Pinky. We can tell you she's a freak. She, oh, there's, there's, there's <laughs> it's so, so weird. Yeah, so I like Maya. She's super cool. So Might we be have the, first the dealer. That's Mr. Howard, Maya's father. Maya's old man. Real dirty dude. Mob old boss. mob, old mob boss. Yeah. Got a lot um, of dirt. Got a lot, lot of, of dirt. dirt. He's obviously. This whole movie is like monsters and monsters, movie? like it, book. book. I'm drunk. I'm already drunk. Thank I know, but for yeah, the ice. Swear the ice. I said, yeah. I, you made me chug that, take and a I'm shot. a girl. Yeah, you take a no, I'm drunk. That's fine. <laughs> Wait, yours is more. I mean, mine is more. Oh my god, why do you hate me so much? I don't hate you. Oh god. Oh. Cheers. Mmm. Oh god, that's gross. That's the last of that. 
ever. <sighs> We're not taking that again. Ever. That shit's uh, fucked up. Gives me chills. So that's Hauer. Um, I am also a tower, right? H A U E R. I don't if I'm pronouncing it's how, that how incorrectly, I'm fired. So then we got Jeffrey Sr. Oh, yeah. This dude is a dick. That's all I'm gonna tell you about him. He started, Obviously, he's he, a senator. He started all this, and what happens to him up. sucks. So I, we're gonna lead. To, I'm gonna lead to this because we're already because we can't spoil it. So I'm not gonna talk yeah. about the father too much. I love and hate this book at the same time. Tracy, I'm sure you're a beautiful woman. I'd like to meet you someday. I know, I remember you married, read, you yeah, you're super married. Get a like, it. I'd like to meet you because you seem like an interesting person because you really drew some emotions out of me that I didn't know I had. So. That's good. We'll say that much. And that's yeah. how you know you're a good writer. I just mm -hmm. hate what happens in this book. It's not, I don't hate the book, but I just hate what happens in it. I think that's kind of intentional. And that's, yeah. and that's the point. So yeah. you did a good job. Kudos, A plus. You get DZ's. Seal of approval. There's yeah. a seal that pops up right there. So there's a couple other notable characters. You got Philip. Philip is also oddly entwined in everybody's life. Philip's in everyone's mm -hmm. story. Philip is involved. But yeah, dude, you'd be like, dang, Philip's everywhere. But Philip is a big chunk of yeah. this. Yeah, I story. think Philip is the most fucked up character in this book. I think he's even more fucked up than Jeffrey and uh, Mr. No, Howard. No, 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 because it's the beekeeper. He's the most. Well, I don't know. By far. <laughs> No, no. See, that's my problem with this book. Say you put Philip in this box, how can the beekeeper don't want the same box? He's the same guy. I don't know. Exactly. exactly. That's my problem you know with the book. You know who it kind of reminds me of? The beekeeper kind of reminds me of, you know when Heroes, the the uh, HRG guy, the horn rim glasses guy? Yeah. How yeah, he yeah, yeah. does a lot of fucked up shit, but then he's a family man, nope. so he can't hate his can't, ass. Nope, can't do that with him. Nope. I, that's how I kind of feel about the, the beekeeper. No, nope. beekeeper oh. is a horrible human being. He's a horrible, come on, Megan, he's a horrible human being. Whatever, I like his ass. He's a horrible human being. I can't give him a pass. So, we talked a little bit about Megan. Megan is the beekeeper's, like, assistant. Right-hand woman. I feel like she's, like, the, um... Beekeeper in training? Uh, that's trying to steal the everlasting gobstopper in uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, Slugworth. Because I feel like she pops up. She pops she up pops and up. Every, and manipulates everybody. She's a horrible person. So too. she's like the fucking ain't the hook. I don't know. She, she sucks. But Megan, she's the fucking lure. She you sucks. You know what too. I'm talking about? She I sucks. love this bitch. I hate her. I too. love her so much. She's cool. She's Jack's assistant. Jack the beekeeper's Peter assistant. Shot. I saw that. And I tried. I saw that. I just saw it right now. She's trying to cheat. I just. Threw it back. I didn't know there was stuff still in there. It was like it was half. Fuck a off. Okay, then you got <laughs> Regina. Who was Regina? Somebody's side piece. See, in this case, side is not good. Side beer, good. Side piece, bad. I mean, it's good. It depends on the depends situation. Depends on the situation. Then you got Mary, who was Angela's mom. I don't know. She's kind of. You don't really meet her, but she's mentioned she's a lot. The, she's mentioned a lot, yeah. Then you got Jillian, just some other random chick. So you've got other characters going on in, in the book, so there are other people going on, but those are the main people. So one of the quotes that I highlighted was, Hello, Angela. My name is Megan. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is kind of explaining the title. I keep bees for a hobby. I do love honey straight from the comb, don't you? Um, they're trying to describe, at, at some point they're describing, oh, they say it's a bunch of different people who, mm. it's like a, like a department of people. And then this one, this is the quote I highlighted, it says, others say that it's a euphemism for hell. Mm. I liked that. Frankly, waiting is a bitch. Oh, that's, <laughs> isn't that Angela? <laughs> yes, I yeah. fucking love that. I don't know why I love this so that. much. Angela was a good yeah. character, yeah. There's some good quotes in here, it's just, you get so mad. Like, you get so mad. Like, I was so mad reading this book. Like, I'm running errands with my mother while she's in the, you know, talking to the doctor. And I'm reading this book, mad, yelling, like, what? All right, who's your favorite character? Oh, it's Ed. Ed is my favorite character. That's easy. I like Ed. Ed gets the short end of the stick, and he's a grunt. Ed is pretty much like a soldier, and he's smart, and he's not a bad guy on paper. No, scratch that. He's a bad guy on paper, but not a bad guy in person. That's pretty much what it is. Everybody else is way worse. Even the beekeeper. The beekeeper's not a good guy. The beekeeper's a horrible person. I, okay, but conceptually, I like the beekeeper because I like the way it facilitates the story. I think in the sense of these 
the way the story is told is essentially the beekeeper is torturing these stories, their their portion of the story out of the people, and yeah. then they go into flashbacks. Well, you mean as a as a you mean as a as kid. a structure, you know, well, I, I mean, and that's, that's why I, I like that, him. Yeah. That's what I like about him is that. I feel like it's a very interesting, clever, unique way to tell a story. Well, That's give, what I'll I like about the as a, as a storyteller, yeah. as from a construction of a story, as a writer, it's the beekeeper is essential and it's mm -hmm. a clever way to tell a story. I'll yeah. give you that. Yeah. As a character, when you get emo as a person, as a person, he's when you get emotional, you emotional <laughs> involved like in a story, you hate this dude's guts. I do. She's a weirdo. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm wearing I love that shit. Yeah, but go ahead. Who's your favorite character? I do like Ed, but yeah, I gotta go with Angela. I mean... Really? I, I mean, she's like, nice, but I'm surprised. I usually don't pick females. At all the freaks in this book, it's weird that you pick Angela. Because I really feel like she's been dealt a bad rap, and honestly, I feel yeah, she's like... She's the most unlucky one. I feel like thieving is a little bit of a thrill for her, but mostly out of necessity for yeah, life for because she's she's not she doesn't have an education she hasn't been given anything so at the end of the day it's like her last resort. But, she's the most innocent one in this book. But when she, she took that car, she did do it for like a joyride. Yeah, she, she did just, it for yeah, a thrill. Yeah. So I think she pushes the limits, and it's. It's funny how she's almost a paradox because I feel like she is a good person, but then man, this girl has a potty mouth. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but she's still a good she's person. She's fucked up, yeah. yeah. But you know, things have happened to her and she's been through some shit. And at the end of the day, she, like I said, she happened into this plot. Everybody yeah. else plays their part in this yeah, plot. Yeah, she, she kind of got the ball rolling and it sucks because mm -hmm. all she did was steal a car. Probably I don't know. I think Angela's a good person. She's the one good person I in think this so too. book. I think so. It's between her and... Um, Regina's probably good yeah, too, Regina. but whatever. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Other than, yeah. Other than that, everyone else is a bunch of monsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... So, so I have to say her, but I do like the beekeeper because he's fucked up. I and I like too. Ed, like I said. I oh, think I Ed too. is just very well developed. Let's rate it. I'll go first. What's the, what's the scale? What's the Are you doing this on purpose I'm now? drunk. Who I swear about? to God, every time! I got a lot on my mind. Goodreads. One is horrible. Five is fabulous. Okay, One to five. five. Okay. First and foremost, objectively, this book is a, I, it's a five for me. Like I said, I just like that it's unique, whatever. I love Tracy, and I feel like my love for her would make it a five regardless. But objectively, when I really think about how engaged I was in the in the book and how it is unique, and I've never really seen seen structurally a book play out like this, and just I don't know, just my interest in it, and like you said, a, a story that has the ability. It's like we kind of talked about this when we read when a monster calls, um, or a monster calls, whatever it's called. I feel like any book that can drag emotion out of you that much is a good read. Of course. So I can't, I, it's a five. And the, like I said, that's me being objective. That's not just because I love Tracy, even though I do love Tracy. And Tracy, on a scale of one to five, you as a person are a ten. But um, it's a five book. Five of five. Tracy, I never met you, so I could be as honest and this brutal gonna be as possible. Book. I'm just saying. But I'm going to say this. I hate how the story played out. I really do. I really, really do. I I feel like the people who really deserve to die, they didn't. But when I assess my emotions and I go back and find out what my problems were, and you can ask Banshee how mad I was for like that two weeks. I was complaining about this book and that's when I realized that's how you know you have a good book. It really is. Yeah, it is. When you're mad about it, like I'm in like I'm like yeah. eating, you know you know, cereal, cookies and milk and all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I hate the beekeeper. That's how you know you have a good book. So I'm going to give it a five also. It's not because, ah, yes, like, lightning and thunder. It's not because we know who you are because Tracy, I've never met you. This fool has not met you. I'm giving it a five because I was talking about this book three weeks after and I have no idea if I've ever done that before. So yeah. I will give credit where credit is due. Granted, people in this book who deserve to die should have died and didn't. That doesn't mean I didn't like it because I was talking about it forever. Like so you get a five out of five. 
So read this book, guys. Please. Seriously. You you'll you get mad it. too. Read it. Read it. You gotta order it. It's not expensive. The ebook is dirt cheap. Mm. The actual book is cheap. Order it. Um, hit up Tracy on Facebook. She's super cool to talk to. She's very interesting. Oh my god, she's so interesting. I love the hell out of her. I mean, there's all kinds of shit. There's action. There's a little bit of scary stuff going on. There's funny stuff. There's blowjobs. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot there's of sex in this book. It's more than blowjobs. There's a lot yeah. of sex in this book. There's drugs. There's, there's all kinds of shit. There's, sex, there's everything. Something for everything except for your four-year-old. Don't let sex, them read this. Murder, torture, bad words, drugs, money. Like this book Gas is not cars. young adult. Yeah, it's not young adult. It's adult. It's exciting as yeah. shit. It's, it's adult. It's not young adult. This is our first adult book. It's not. Young I adult. feel like it didn't hold up. We had another one. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. So it's five of five. Yeah. That's more, fucking prestige, Tracy. Yeah, good job, Tracy. Yeah. Tracy, come to the show. We will read come a book. Over. You can sing we'll get me. drunk, I got hang a out. Really comfortable guest bed. Yeah. We'll hang out. It's no. only been puked on one time. Thank you for watching Books and Booze with Banshee and DZ. Like, share, subscribe. Read The Beekeeper. Please. I remember I told you if you read any book I tell you to read on this show, it's Six of Crows. That is still true. But if you read two books, it makes this the second book. Six Unless you are under 18. Beekeeper. Don't read this if you're under 18. If you're over 18, read the fuck out of this. But read Six of Crows too. Six of Crows is good. Tracy, I love you. Thank you for giving us this book. I appreciate you. Come down, Tracy. Come down to see us. Next I time swear, you're in California. you should send David one of your romance books. I just want to see if he'll like it. It depends. I mean, give it to your wife, DZ. Would she read a romance I book? Don't she know. Don't, what she does don't, she read? I she likes know. to read. The newspaper. Business, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Stock market. Thank I don't know. you. See you, you like later. <laughs>